At this time, how if you come up, please? Uh, this award is for the recognition of her heroic actions on that night. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, thank you, C. Lawrenceburg. Thanks you. I'm absolutely sure this family here thanks you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this was on, I believe, March 28th. It was about midnight. You know, it was a slow night, honestly. We wouldn't do anything. Call came out of a wreck with injuries where the car was on fire, possibly subject still trapped in the vehicle. I mean, we're pretty close. We're at Quit Mart, so we're within two miles. You know, when I turn right on the Wickrit Road, when I turn, get around the corner, I can see it. This car is engulfed. As rainy night, slow night, uh, roughly around 12 o'clock, got a call, 1046 on Wickle Creek Road. I arrived on scene, the car is fully engulfed. From the way the call come out, I was expecting to have a wreck where somebody had perished. We pull up and like most incidents like that, we hope maybe they got thrown out of the car or something else, so we start searching the area. And you know, when we arrived on the scene, the fire department got there shortly before us. I mean, the car was fully engulfed. Had anybody been in that car, there's nothing in this world that could have been done for them. While we're looking through the field and stuff, there's this young lady walks up on the street and hollers, hey, the driver's up here. You know, and for me, I'm just amazed. We were going to get food at McDonald's and we seen something like lighting up in a ditch. So we pull up and it's a car upside down on fire. Natasha looks at me, she goes, let's help. Let's, let's go get him. I was like, okay. And Bree was like, I'm going to stay here. I was like, you stay there. And we went down there. I grabbed one arm. She grabbed the other and pulled him out. Were there flames at the time or just smoke? Flames. Getting bigger and bigger, stuff spewing everywhere. And then the back eventually caught on fire. Then whenever all the cops and everything showed up, it ended up doing something, made a loud noise. So something exploded there. If that would have been me at my age, 16 years old, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have even thought of it, thought of it. By the time we got there, the fire department, there's nothing that could have been done for him. I mean, the only reason he's alive today is because of those two girls. I asked him, did he believe in God? He said, yeah, that's what you're to. And there's no doubt that them girls being there at that split moment is the reason why he's still breathing air today. So, I mean, it's. it's it's an honor for me to be here, standing here in front of you, talking to you about them girls. It's amazing. When did you calm down? I didn't. Until I woke up the next morning, because I got back to Bree's house. I said, I got to go to bed. I have a headache. I'm, I was shaking. So I was like, I got to go to sleep. So I went to sleep, woke up the next morning. I was like, was this a dream? <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, that was crazy. I just wanted to say that it is an honor for me to be a part of recognizing and honoring these teenagers. I know one of them is not here, but uh, we're thinking of her too. But I cannot tell you how much uh, you know we appreciate and, and recognize what you did. Uh, like I said, they jumped to action immediately without thought of their own lives. I mean, uh, their lives were at risk and his life was at risk. And they put that aside and did what they uh, needed to do or what they wanted to do and without having a clue who he was or anything. So I think that speaks for teenagers. Uh, this is their future here. And I think that, uh, you know, that they could not, it's an honor for us to be a part of this um, as much as anything I've been a part of. So I just want to say thank you. Thank and you uh, how much we, like I said, we thank uh, of teenagers like you and anybody, but you know, for teenagers that just out on the night, you know, and, and run up on something like that and put their own life at risk for someone like I said that they don't even know is uh, beyond the call. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. You don't see uh, many that's that bad, but when we do, they're using fatalities, and you really don't see the public jumping in and doing a heroic act like that. I mean, it happens, but especially 16. 17, 18, 19 year old little girls. They just don't do that. And I feel like the public uh, needs to know that we're behind them. I mean, they don't get enough of that from us. So, you know, what she did is heroic. You know, it's heroic for any of us to do. And I can't say how proud of I am, how honored I am to, to be standing next to her. Because if she hadn't have been there, no doubt, uh, Bobby wouldn't be with us today. Now you've met the guys since then, right? Mm -mm. No? Okay. 
He messaged me on Facebook about a week later and was like, thank you. And I was like, you're welcome. Yeah, I just remember coming down the road and there was a car coming around the curb on my side of the road and I swerved to get out of his way and I woke up in the ambulance. I didn't even know what happened to me until the EMT told me. I had a broken collarbone and I broke three ribs and I had punctured my lung. About a month ago? A over a month. How are you feeling today, I mean, with your injuries? I mean, my shoulder and my collarbone and my ribs, they still bother me. But as far as everything else, I'm recovering pretty quick. I'm just happy to have a family that prays and friends that pray. I didn't even know the wreck was that serious until Officer Osborne here told me how serious it was. He showed me a picture of my car on fire. Now, have you met these girls since that happened? I haven't seen them in person, but I've contacted them and appreciated them for pulling me out of the car. Well, I think there is one that's here tonight. Uh, the other girl, I don't think she can make it. Would you care if I take the camera in when you meet her? Is that all right? Is that all right? You want to meet her before, right? You want to meet her before. I've not seen her in person. I've just okay. seen them. Me out of the I got it, but I didn't even look at the black one. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> it was so brave of you. You did not have to do that. Thank you. I did. I didn't want you hurt. I didn't want you to die. I wanted to save you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's the only son I got, only kid I got in existence. So the entire Stevenson family blesses your family. When they seen that car, everybody started crying. Just the pictures of it. The whole entire family we sent to Atlanta, everywhere, everybody cried. So the whole entire Stevenson family blesses you and thanks y'all, your family. That's what I wanted to let y'all know. And may God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, you see the first police department, myself, Captain Russ, Officer Kelsey, everybody involved. We are truly honored to meet you, know you, and hope we don't meet again like that. But <laughs> I will say this, it's nice to know you got our back. That's all I got, folks.